Hey guys, and welcome to the Command Tower. We make ADA Shack decks. If you enjoy these videos, make sure to like and subscribe. Today's deck is a Valentine and Lisette deck. Valentine is 1 1 with Menace and Lifelink. It says if a non token creature an opponent controls will die, exile instead. When you do, you can pay 2. If you do, create a 1 1 black and green past creature token with when this creature dies, you gain 1 life. Set is a 4 4. With whenever you gain life, you can pay one. If you do, put a one one counter on each creature control, and those creatures gain trample until end turn. So, the deck's gonna do a couple different things. First, we're gonna be making a lot of tokens, mostly with Valentine, but with some other cards. Then, we're gonna have some sacrifice outlets so we can sacrifice our tokens, mostly the Valentine ones, so we can gain some life. And then, we're gonna have some other cards to gain life, but also drain opponent's life. So then we can get 1-1 counters on our creatures with a set. Total price of this deck is $36.71, and this is according to TCG Player, and it's not included price of basic lands. Before we start the video, please consider checking out our TCG Player affiliate link. Views it, it helps us continue to make more videos. Now, let's get right into the deck. First off, we have Ramp. Pristine Talisman, taps your colors and you gain 1 life. Paradise Plume. When it's a battlefield, you choose a color. Whenever a player casts a spell of the chosen color, you can gain a life. And it also taps for one man of the chosen color. Hero finds Chalice. When it's a battlefield, target opponent loses one life, and you gain one life. And it taps for colorless. All these are going to be great, because if we have the set out, we're going to be putting one one counters on our creatures. Line of our elves, taps are green. Leafkin Druid, taps are green, but if you control four more creatures, you get two green instead. Which, we're going to have a lot of tokens. Leyline Prowler. Death Touch and Lifelink, and it taps for one man of any color. This one's going to be really good if we're putting 1-1 counters on it, because with Death Touch and Lifelink, it can become a very scary creature. Accomplished Alchemist, it taps for one man of any color. You can tap it, at X man of any one color, or X amount of life you gain this turn. Hedron Archive, taps for two colors. You can pay two, tap it, sacrifice it, and draw two cards. Sisei's Ring, also taps for two colors. Commander Sphere, it has for one mana of color, you can sacrifice it to draw a card. And Golgari Signet, you can pay one, tap it, and get both of the Golgari colors. Then we have some token generators. Tend the Pest, essential cost cast spell, sacrifice a creature, you create X, 1-1, one, one, black and green, pass creature tokens. This is going to be really nice because we're going to be making some really big creatures with the set when we gain life. Then we can sacrifice one of those creatures. Create more pests, sacrifice the pests, and gain more life. Pestilent Cauldron, you can tap it, discard a card, create a 1 1 pest. Or you can pay 1, tap it, each opponent mills cards equal the amount of life you gain this turn. Or you can pay 4, tap it, exile 4 target cards from a single graveyard, and draw a card. So we're mostly going to use the first ability, but if we really need some cards, we can use the other abilities. Restorative Burst, return up to 2 target creature, land, or and or Planeswalker cards from your graveyard to your hand. And each player gains for life. Then you exile Restorative Burst. So, if we don't want to play the Cauldron, we can use this, get some cards back, and gain some life. Necrogenesis. You can pay two, exile target creature card from a graveyard, create a 1 1 green sapling creature token. Grismal the Dread Sower. Trample. At the beginning of your end step, each player creates a 1 1 green plant creature token. Whenever a creature token dies, you put a 1-1 counter on him. And we're going to be sacrificing a whole lot of creature tokens. Dread Horde Invasion. At the beginning of your upkeep, you lose 1 life and a mass 1. And whenever a zombie token you control with power 6 or greater attacks, it gains life length on a turn. This is going to be nice because we can always just sacrifice the token every turn. But if we want to keep the token and make it bigger, we can always let that happen. And then when it gains life link, attack and get the life gain triggers. Right of Bells and Lock. It's a saga, and the first two parts are create two zero one black cleric creature tokens. In the third part, create a 6-6 six, six black demon creature token with flying trample, and at the beginning of your upkeep, sacrifice the creature. If you can't, this creature deals 6 damage to you. Now the third part might hurt us a little bit, but we can always sacrifice that creature before it deals damage to us. And the other parts are just going to give us more creatures that we can always sacrifice. Squirrel Nest, Enchant Land, 
Chain lane has tap, create a 1 1 green squirrel creature token. Second harvest, for each token you control, create a token that's a copy of that permanent. So, you can copy all our tokens. This is going to be especially useful when we have a whole lot of pests out. So, we can double the amount of pests and we can sacrifice them and gain a lot of life. Sedgemore Witch, Menace, and his ward pay 3 life. And as Magecraft, whenever you cast or copy an instant or source spell, create a pest. Then we have a couple sacrifice outlets for our tokens. Carry on feeder, can't block, and you can sacrifice a creature, put a 1 1 counter on it. This will be especially useful when you use Lizette to give our creatures trample and more 1 counters. Viserys here, you can sacrifice a creature, scry 1. Claws of Gix, you can pay 1, sacrifice a permanent, you gain life. This one's going to be really nice because it's 0 mana, and you're going to be gaining life. Lampad of Death's Vigil. You pay one, sacrifice a creature, each opponent loses one life, and you gain one life. Guiltless Skull. Pay one, sacrifice a creature, you gain one life. So once again, with Lizette, life gain is going to be really helpful. Then we have some life drain and life gain. This is going to be helpful so we can slowly take opponents down, while also gaining life and getting triggers off of Lizette. Zula Port Cutthroat. Whenever it or another creature control dies, each opponent loses one life, and you gain a life. Vindicative Vampire. Whenever another creature control dies, it deals one damage to your opponent, and you gain one life. Nadir's Nightblade. Whenever a token you control leaves the battlefield, each opponent loses one life, and you gain one life. All these are going to be really helpful because we're going to be sacrificing a bunch of tokens. Savra, Queen of the Golgari. Whenever you sacrifice a black creature, you can pay two. If you do... Each other player sacrifice a creature. Whenever you sacrifice a green creature, you can gain two life. So, we're either going to be gaining life, or we're going to make our opponents sacrifice creatures. And when our opponents sacrifice creatures, we're going to get triggers off for our commander. So either way, it's going to work out in our favor. Poison Tip Archer, Reach and Death Touch, and whenever another creature dies, each opponent loses one life. Revenge of Ravens, Whenever a creature attacks you or a planeswalker you control, that creature's controller loses one life and you gain one life. Marauding Blight Priest. Whenever you gain life, each opponent loses one life. Dina, Soul Steeper, is basically just a better version of Marauding Blight Priest. It says whenever you gain life, each opponent loses one life. You can pay one, sacrifice another creature. Dina gets plus X plus zero until on a turn, where X is to sacrifice creature's power. Blood Tithe. Each opponent loses 3 life, and you gain life, equal number of life lost this way. Chalice of Life, you can tap it to gain 1 life, then if you have at least 10 more life than your starting life total, you can transform it. And when it's transformed, you can tap it to make target player lose 5 life. Isolation Cell, whenever an opponent casts a creature spell, that player loses 2 life unless he or she pays 2 mana. And then, Scavenging Ooze, which is certainly life drain, but it can gain you some life. You can pay a green and exile a target card from a graveyard, and if it was a creature card, you put a 1-1 one -one counter on it, and you gain a life. So you'll get a lot of triggers with your commander, and this will slowly get bigger. Then we have some cards that benefit off of us gaining life. Ageless Entity. Whenever you gain life, you put that many 1-1 one -one counters on it, so it's going to get to be really big really fast. Bloodthirsty Aerialist. Flying. Whenever you gain life, you put a 1-1 one -one counter on it. Spike Feeder. And there's a battlefield with two 1-1 counters on it, and you can pay two, remove a 1-1 counter from it, and put a 1-1 counter on target creature. And then you could also remove a 1-1 counter from it, and you gain two life. So, this is going to be a really good combo with the back side of our commander, because we can remove a 1-1 counter from it to gain two life. When we gain life, we can pay one to put a 1-1 counter on each other creature we control, other than our commander. So, we can put 1-1 counters on our creatures for as long as we have mana. And then Blood Researchers has Menace, and whenever you gain life, you put a 1-1 counter on it. Then we have some card advantage. Arguel's Bloodfast, you can pay 2 and pay 2 life to draw a card. At the beginning of your upkeep, if you have 5 less life, you can transform it. When you transform it, it's a land that can tap for black. Or you can tap it, sacrifice a creature, and you gain life equal to the sacrifice creature's toughness. So it's going to give you card draw, and then it's going to be sacrifice outlet. Underworld Connections, you can enchain a land, 
Chain line has tap, pay one life, draw a card. Bull Divine Reclamation. Whenever a creature you control dies, you gain one life and draw a card. So we're going to be sacrificing our pests. So we're going to get cards from it, and it's going to gain us life. Damnable Pact. Target player draws X cards and loses X life. Ayara, first of Lock Twain. Whenever it or another black creature enters the battlefield under your control, each opponent loses one life and you gain one life. So, with all those pests entering the battlefield, our opponents are going to lose life and we're going to gain life. And you can tap it, sacrifice another black creature to draw a card. Read the Bones. You can scry two, and then draw two cards and you lose two life. Funeral Rites. Draw two cards, lose two life, and mill two cards. And then Plum the Forbidden. As initial cost to cast a spell, you can sacrifice one or more creatures. When you do, copy the spell for each creature sacrifice this way. And then, you draw a card and you lose one life. So, we can sacrifice as many creatures as we want, and draw a card for each creature we sacrifice. Vampiric Rites. You can pay two, sacrifice a creature, you gain one life and draw a card. And Spark Reaver is very similar. You can pay three, sacrifice a creature or planeswalker, you gain one life and draw a card. So once again, drawing cards is going to be nice, and we're also going to get life gain too. Then we have some removal. Putrefy, the short target artifact or creature, it can't be regenerated. Murder, the short target creature. Feed the swarm, the short target creature and enchantment opponent controls, you lose a life equal to that permanence mana value. Binding the old gods. It's a saga. The first part is the short target non lane per permanent opponent controls. Second part, search your library for a forest card. Put in the battlefield tapped and shuffle your library. The third part is creatures you control gain death touch until on a turn. So, it's going to kill something, ramp you, and also, if we have a lot of pests, we can give them all death touch, and that's going to be really useful. Abyssal Gatekeeper. When it dies, each player sacrifices a creature. And Barter and Blood is similar, with the each player sacrifices two creature. And those are going to be really nice, because then we can pay mana with our commander to get a lot of pests. Consuming Vapors. Target player sacrifices a creature, and you gain life equal to that creature's toughness. And it also has Rebound. So once again, we're going to be killing creatures, and we can get pests with our commander. And this will also gain us life too. Butcher of Malakir, probably one of the best cards in the deck. Flying, whenever it or another creature you control dies, each opponent sacrifices a creature. So, as long as we have a sacrifice outlet, we can keep sacrificing our pests to kill our opponent's creatures, and then we can pay mana to make more pests. Anawan, the Ruin Sage, as it in your upkeep, each player sacrifices a non-vampire creature. Even though it's not a vampire deck, we do have some vampires, including our commander, and it's also going to make everybody sacrifice a creature, so then we can get more pests off of it. Then in Garruk's Wake, destroy all creatures you don't control and all planeswalkers you don't control. And Deadly Tempest, destroy all creatures, each player loses life equal number of creatures they controlled that were destroyed this way. Lastly, we have lands. Foul Orchard. And his battlefield tapped and taps with Golgari Colors. Golgari Guildgate and his battlefield tapped and does the same thing. Witherbloom Campus is the same thing, but also you can pay for tap it and scry one. Golgari Rot Farm and his battlefield tapped. When it is battlefield, you return a land you control to its owner's hand. Taps are both the Golgari Colors. Jungle Hollow and his battlefield tapped. And when it enters battlefield, you gain a life. And taps with Golgari Colors again. Lanor Waste, it taps your colors, or you can also tap it full of Golgari colors, and then it deals one damage to you. Sap Seep Forest, and it is battlefield tapped, and then you can pay a green and tap it and you gain one life, but only if you have two or more green permanents, which we probably should. Command Tower, taps your one mana of any color. Evolving Wilds, you can tap it, sacrifice it, search a library for a basic land card, put in the battlefield tap and shuffle your library. Grim Backwoods, taps are colorless, or you can pay for and tap it, sacrifice a creature, and draw a card. So it can be a sacrifice outlet, and it can help us draw cards. High Market, it taps are colorless, or you can tap it, sacrifice a creature, you gain one life. So once again, it's a sacrifice outlet, and this one's going to help us gain life too. Radiant Fountain, when it's a battlefield, you gain two life, and it taps are colorless. 
and now we just have 12 forests and 13 swamps. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to like and subscribe, and have a great day.